Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Cutter One. I'm your host, JJSJ, your resident troublemaker and your resident culture warrior. I hope you're all doing well on this Tuesday as we trudge along through the week, you know, on our, our quest to make it till Friday. All right. All right, folks. Uh, I hope you're all doing well. Hope everyone's having a great day so far, wherever you may be. All right. So let's jump right into this one. Um, uh, uh, all right. Anyway. Um, this one is coming to us from the good folks over at startifacts.com. Let's see what they have to say. It says, my precious, the Lord of the Rings biggest inconsistency finally explained. Uh oh, we had a big inconsistency that apparently has gone unnoticed since 1954 and it's finally been explained. I wonder what that would be. What appeared to be a hole in the plot is actually a deeper revelation of the versatility of J.R.R. Tolkien's work. The Rings of Pewter from the World of the Lord of the Rings was an... Okay, I'm sorry. The Ring of Power from the World of the Lord of the Rings was an incredibly powerful artifact that gave its main owner unprecedented reserves of strength. But ironically, he could not get to it because first, the ring was with Smeagol slash Gollum. Then, Bilbo stole it. And after the burden of destroying it, Frodo took upon himself, or rather Gandalf gave him this mission. Um, okay, I'm just trying to make sense of that first paragraph. It was a little bit wonky, um, but maybe it was just me. However, many viewers wondered why the ring immediately affected and corrupted Smeagol, and why Frodo was able to bring it to Mount Doom. The ring is dangerous because it always seeks to return to its owner and has a mind of its own. It corrupts those who find it, forcing them to display their worst traits in the pursuit of power and enhances its temporary owner's strength. Uh, thus, in theory, such powerful and ambitious characters as Gandalf, Galadriel, or Aragorn with the ring would become as powerful as Sauron, but would eventually succumb to evil and fall to the dark side. Gandalf knew this, and so he turned his eyes to the hobbits. Hobbits, however, are not ambitious, not striving for power, in no need for war. They were even surprised when Gandalf said that war would soon come to the Shire. That is, the hobbits did not even know that somewhere in relatively close proximity to them, a war for the fate of the world was raging. This made Frodo an ideal candidate to wear the ring, but this does not mean that all hobbits were equally immune to its influence. One day, the ring was found in the river by a hobbit named Deagle. One day, the ring was found in the river. Couldn't bother telling us what river. That's just like a random fucking sentence right there, but I digress. Um, named Deagle. He was fishing with his cousin Smeagol and heard the call of the artifact. Really? Okay. The latter demanded the find for himself as a birthday present. Deagle refused, and Smeagol strangled him. Smeagol was originally a cowardly and greedy hobbit and his cousin was not much better, which is why the ring took possession of their wills so quickly. So, we can say that the ring is less harmful to the hobbits because of their peaceful and kind-hearted nature, but Smeagol was not kind, and the ring corrupted him even more. Gollum is an unfortunate and unwilling slave to forces beyond his control. He can rightly be considered the character most affected by the ring, but it was he who ultimately contributed to the salvation of Middle-earth, even if he did so to satisfy his own passions. And this is by Zoe Wallace. Um... Uh, like, I don't even know where to start with this one. I Well, actually, I do. I do know where to start. That's where to start with this one. I'm sorry, Zoe, but yeah. Um, either you have done an incredibly, incredibly horrible job of trying to summarize your thoughts for this article and or Tolkien's work. Okay, and or the finer plot points that you tried to illustrate, or or 
you just don't know Tolkien very well, and you're sort of speaking half out of your butt, so to speak, um, going by sort of like the abridged Cliff Notes version, okay? Um, because there's a lot here that I, is just conceptually oversimplified. Um, I'm not going to say that there's there's things that that are wrong per se, but there there are def there's definitely a lot here that is ridiculously oversimplified, right? Um, it because the ring doesn't just give the its owner um, unprecedented reserves of strength. Um, that that's sort of what you imply in the beginning. Um, the ring of power from the world of the Lord of the Rings was an incredibly powerful artifact that gave its main owner unprecedented reserves of strength. No, its main owner, owner, if you, if you're referring to Sauron, the person who created it, he put some of his own will and some of his own spirit, for lack of a better term, into the ring. That's what makes the ring so powerful is that some of his will to corrupt and dominate and subjugate was put into the ring. And that's what gives the ring its power, its ability to corrupt and subjugate and seduce those who come into contact with it. So just saying, oh, well, it gives him a lot of strength. That's ridiculously oversimplifying the whole thing. Um um, and, and then to, to answer your question, why the ring immediately affected and corrupted Smeagol and why Frodo was able to bring it to Mount Doom. Well, I mean, let's let's you, you're sort of on the right track on that one. Part of it was due, I think, in, in fact, to Smeagol and Deagle's uh, personality slash disposition slash, you know, who they were as individuals. Um, and the ring does play on your worst traits now. You 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 say that it forces them to display their worst traits in the pursuit of power and enhances its temporary owner's strength is what you actually are quoted of saying. I think your the first part of your sentence was correct in that it corrupts those who find it and those who use it, but it doesn't force them to display their worst traits. It, I think it just corrupts them and their worst traits will naturally, by extension of being corrupted, be brought to the surface. It doesn't sort of force them to. It's not like, you know, if you're a, a liar, right, that the the ring is going to force you to let everyone know you're lying and, and constantly tell lies. It's just the ring is going to corrupt you, okay, and it's going to manipulate you. And part of that will be it will your 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 natural tendency to be a liar will sort of be i i want to say bubble up to the surface but it's not like it's forcing you to it's just a, it, it you're naturally going to do that because it's corrupting you right it's changing your 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 overall essence of who you are from a good a good person or a normal person into the this person that's based on these worst traits. So it doesn't force you to display your worst traits. Um, and it doesn't enhance your owner, the owner's strength. Um, I, I'm trying to remember if that's ever mentioned anywhere in the books, and I can't honestly say that I remember reading that. Somebody down in the comments, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember it enhancing the its, its owner's strength. Um... Because, you know, when Frodo wore the ring and he did wear it on numerous occasions, um, his strength did not get somehow enhanced in any way. Um, it didn't help him when, at Weathertop. Um, it didn't help him in any instance where he put the ring on. His strength was never there. As a matter of fact, as they got closer to Mount Doom and in inside Mordor, um, when he puts the ring on... In, I'm, I'm sort of imagining from the film here. Um, if anything, it becomes more of a burden. It's sapping what little strength he has left. So I would say that that's 100% probably not correct there, uh, Zoe. Um, uh, da, 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 da. I mean, you can't argue with what you're saying about Gandalf, Galadriel, or Aragorn. If they had the ring, they would become as powerful as Sauron. Yeah, and they would be, and they would be corrupted. Um... Uh, 
you're right in that hobbits don't strive for power um and that they have no need for war i would say that saying that hobbits aren't ambitious is not correct um even within the the works um the other folks besides sam frodo merry and pippin the other hobbits that that are that you see um or that have more than just background character parts and pc parts within the story um they they have you know am ambition and stuff like that you know um it may be not what we would consider to be ambitious, but it's their own version of it, right? It's that simple life being the best farmers that they can be, you know, growing the largest pumpkin that they can, you know, in all of Hobbits and, you know, all of the Shire and, and whatnot. So, I mean, Hobbits do have ambition. I would not say that Hobbits are not ambitious. Um, I don't think there's anything to support that. Uh, they're not... They're not... Um, about advancing their position, their status in life per se, they're not about that. But they do have ambitions. They, you know, if they're if Sam's a gardener, he wants to be the best gardener. That's ambition, right? That's that's you you know you you want to be the best at what you do. That's ambitious. So I don't think you can say that that they are hobbits are not ambitious. Um, Da, 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 da. I, I don't agree with you. I mean, yeah, they may have been surprised um, that there was war coming to the Shire. Um, I don't think they were as clueless as you make them out to be in their article. I mean, they were dealing, they, they were shipping pipe weed. So they did, they had to have dealings with the outside world. That's just a given. Okay, as a matter of fact, we know for a fact from if you read the books that they have dealings with Saruman um, prior to to the scouring of the Shire. Um, that's why, you know, Merry and Pippin find all that, you know, long bottom leaf and other, other pipe weed from the Shire, um, they find in, in Orthanc. Um, so yeah, I don't think they're that they're as clueless as you make them out to be. Um, Da, 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 da. I, I, okay, I mean, I, I don't want to get over overall nitpicky. I mean, I think anybody who knows a little bit about um, Tolkien and the lore and the Lord of the Rings, particularly the people that watch this show, are well read in this stuff and well versed in this stuff. And they probably just at this point in this video know where you've gone off the rails and where you've sort of oversimplified or or made some some uh, mistakes here. Um, I would say the biggest thing that why why it affected Gollum so much or slash Smeagol. Smeagol slash Gollum, um, as opposed to Frodo, is um, the amount of time. Remember, it, it, Gollum has the ring. In, he's in possession of the ring for uh, is uh, several hundred years. Easy. I, I want to say at least 500, right? At least 500 years he's in possession of the ring. And, and that's sort of why he ends up the way he ends up. Um, Frodo, it takes a lot more time. Um, well, and, and even, well, you can't even really say it takes a lot more time because you don't, Tolkien sort of just gives us a, a, a sort of summarized view of how it affected Smeagol slash Gollum, but he doesn't give you the timeline for how long it took for it to, to really, you know, take control of him. We, we know it wasn't just like in a day. Right. We know at the very minimum it was weeks. I think they mentioned it's like like three months or something like that. Um, by the time like Smeagol gets the ring and and is finally like sort of forced out, like he's sort of like kicked out of the village. Right. I think it's three months. Somebody correct me in the comment section below. Um, but I know it's like it's not overnight. Right. It, it's at the very minimum. It's a couple of weeks. Right. Um, now, now Frodo being a much higher caliber of, of Hobbit. Um, and when I say caliber, I mean like his personality, right? He was a much, um, better personality than, than Smeagol was, um, in, in terms of, you know, being a good person. Um, it would obviously take longer to affect him, um, but ultimately it does, it does affect him. Remember everything that happens in the Lord of the Rings happens over a time period of about 13 months, right? Um, give or take, my numbers could be a little bit off. I understand that, but I'm, I'm sort of just trying to 
pull information off the top of my head here. It's roughly about 13 months. Um, so, so, you know, we're not going to see Frodo immediately wake up one morning and suddenly he's like, he's like Gollum, right? It's not going to happen like that. It's going to be a slow, slow process of consumption, which is what we see throughout the book. You know, throughout the book, we see it having this slow withering effect on Frodo and who he is as a person. So, um, I would say Zoe, if you want, you know, give me a call sometime. I'll, I'll, I'll sort of talk you through some of the finer points if you'd like. Um, maybe we could sit down. We'll have a reading, like an online reading, if you really want to, you know, get into some stuff. I've got a whole bunch of books there that can help really explain and get into the nitty gritty about some of this stuff. Um, but, but I think your article is a little bit misplaced in that it's, oh, it oversimplifies the whole thing. And some of your information is not necessarily correct. I'll put it that way. But anyway, folks, uh, let me know what you think. What, why do you think that the, uh, the, the ring of power, um, you know, seem to, to have to work harder, let's just say, to, to corrupt Frodo than it did to corrupt Smeagol, right? Um, do you think it was just, just based on their personalities? Um, or do you think there was more to it? Um, it's, it's, it's an interesting question. I just, like I said, I, I just think that, um, uh, Zoe here just oversimplified it and, and sort of doesn't have all her ducks in a row to write an article like this. But that's just me. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong. Some people might be like, hey, Jay, you don't always know what the hell you're talking about. Sometimes I get my information wrong too. I understand. That's why I'm not ripping into anybody right now. I'm just saying it, it's a, silly if you're going to put out an, arg an article like this in an online publication that you would sort of really oversimplify it like this is like as if you're explaining it to like a, a sixth grader or something like that um there's no nuance in this article whatsoever and some of the information is just factually wrong but that's just me anyway let me know what you think down in the comment section below remember if you like the video then like the video if you want to share the video by all means do so it gets us it gets it seen and it helps us with the youtube algorithm as always if you have not subscribed I would hope you would consider hitting that subscribe button and turning it from red to gray and joining the army of beautiful badasses. And as always, if you are a returning subscriber, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. You guys and gals are the ones that make this all worthwhile. All right, folks, that's going to do it with this one. So until next time, as always, be good, be safe, be awesome, but more importantly, stay more darkish. Peace.